I'm Jay, your guide on yet another installment of Banks Insider. This is where you'll find out what the team's been up to for the week of April 17th, 2020. In this week's Engineering Unboxed, Gale receives a much needed package from Heat Shield Products. The box contained a few high quality turbo insulators as well as material to wrap the up pipes and exhaust on both the Killing a Duramax engine and the supercharged twin turbo Duramax. In addition to valuable shielding products, he also receives a gift from a fan that's sure to put a smile on your face. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or Facebook feed so you'll get the very latest Engineering Unboxed episode every Wednesday. In the R&D, we get a sneak peek at the development of the next application for the Derringer inline tuner, the three liter Duramax. Duramax. Just introduced for the 2020 model year for the Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra, this new GM diesel offering is attracting customers who've wanted the torque of a diesel but don't necessarily have the need for earth-moving power of the 6.6 liter L5P. What do we need? More but as with any diesel, there's always room to make more power. Luckily, the Derringer and the iDash combo is the answer for reliable power and torque improvements. Banks engineers have been hard at work testing and tuning to get the most power available. In addition to the power improvements, we're adding class-leading safety features like auto rate adaptive tuning, trans-command active transmission safety, and active safety that ensure smooth operation that won't leave you stranded. We'll keep you posted on testing and availability. Next in iDash on the road, we visit with Kyle McQueenie who added the iDash and Derringer to his 2020 GMC truck not to turn his rig into a hot rod, but to give it the extra pep to tow a fifth wheel and take his family on cross-country trips. The New York native says, I figured having a little more horsepower was needed, and since Banks has been making turbo products since the dawn of time, they're pretty much the best choice to go with. Kyle likes the iDash because it allows him to take a look at just about everything he wants to see without wondering what's going on inside his engine. He says the factory gauges are somewhat limited on what you can see. And as for hot rods, Kyle has a heavily modded Subaru Street Machine and his FC RX-7 race car, which has had both an LS1 and Honda K24 in it. Next up is our dealer spotlight, where we take a look at Rudy's Diesel Performance. Maybe a name you've heard before. They've grown quite a bit from their humble beginnings which is a complete understatement. Rudy's Diesel started doing business in 2008 as a one-man shop with just Aaron Rudolph himself selling parts online out of his basement. And so in 2015, Rudy's Diesel moved into the set of buildings where they currently reside, a 64,000 square foot facility made up of four buildings and 45 employees. Although Rudy sells a lot of different products, the Bangs Power stuff, especially the inline tuners, have grown in popularity with their clientele. Ever since the EPA got strict, the Bangs products definitely moved to the top of the list, says Randall, who's part of the management team there. Bangs offers some of the best and safest horsepower around. Rudy's Diesel doesn't just talk a good performance game, they live it with their race team and their two in-house built drag trucks. While both trucks get their power from 6.4 liter power stroke engines, that's pretty much where the similarities end. Their two-wheel drive drag truck dressed in a black color scheme packs 1,400 horsepower with a single turbo. Their other truck, blue and black, has a four-wheel drive setup and runs compound turbos huffing into a dry ice intercooler creating high density boost, laying down upwards of 1,900 horsepower. In the diesel drag racing game, everyone knows Rudy's. In our fan focus, we chatted with Dominic McGuire, who has a rather unusual use for a Banks turbo. He put a Banks Sidewinder turbo from a 6.9 liter, 7.3 liter diesel turbo kit and put it in his, get this, Acura RSX. See, he met up with a tuner that said that if he gathered all the stuff, the hard parts and whatnot, turbo intercoolers, that he could assemble a custom kit for virtually nothing. Might be exaggerating, but you get the idea. Dominic started searching around on the internet for some various components on a shopping list, and he came across a guy online selling a turbo off his old Ford diesel and decided, well, sure, that'll work. True to his word, the tuner fabricated a turbo system, and after a tuning session, Dominic had his car running like a champ. He had this to say, the turbo's awesome. I've thrown everything at this thing, and it just won't die. Such a great design. Let's let this soak in for a second. A Gale Banks turbo in an Acura. Next on his wish list of upgrades is an E85 flex fuel setup so we can crank up the boost with a goal of 500 horsepower. Up, 
So it's no news to anyone that the COVID-19 virus has ravaged the country, caused businesses and virtually our entire economy to come to a screeching halt. It's changed our lives. The automotive industry is not immune and plants across the United States have stopped making parts that we need to build vehicles. Auto workers have been furloughed, but to some, well, they've been invigorated by a sense of duty. In this week's Gale video, we get a glimpse of Banks Tech, a division of Gale Banks Engineering that you may never have heard of. It's in a building just behind me. Banks Tech manufactures a purpose-built Duramax diesel engine based on the architecture of the truck engine for the Oshkosh Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, or JLTV for short. This vehicle is the replacement for the aged Humvee and is light years ahead in capability and occupant protection. Banks Tech had exhausted their supply of base engines. And at Gale's request, the D-Max assembly plant in Moraine, Ohio, asked its employees to voluntarily return for a week to build engines for banks. And in one week, they built an entire month's supply of engines, 374 of them. These engines will go through the bank's process and be finished to military spec and sent to Oshkosh in Wisconsin to be dropped in the JLTV. In the video, Gail praises the D-Max staff and shows just what 374 Duramax engines look like. And with secrets passed on to us from ancient aliens, we flip on the light drive and bend reality to move the Banks time machine to 1967, where we observe a young Gail Banks growing his business. Gail went from doing business out of his parents' garage as a teenager to creating CP's Auto and Marine in a little tiny spot in an alley of Linwood, California in 1960. CP stood for Cal Poly, the college he was attending at the time. Seeing his business grow as demand for his stoutly built engines gained more and more traction meant it was time to move. And in 1967, he opened an 800 square foot facility on San Gabriel Boulevard, quickly expanding to 2,800 square feet and adding an engine blueprint machining capability. He operated under the name of CP's Auto and Marine for two more years before changing the business to Gale Banks Racing Engines, where his name instantly became known for legendary performance on land and water. Where my shirt model at? Henry, come here for a second. I wanna show you guys the brand new Banks House of Horsepower. Yep, turn around. Now this is a big design right here. And I think that, uh, well, it's appropriate. It's big for big horsepower. We just got this shirt this morning and it's now in stock at bankspower.com. Henry, thank you very much for the uh, the modeling and the mask. So you guys stay glued to our Facebook and Instagram feeds and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up on all the latest goings on at Banks. We're still here and we're pumping out performance.